on our tweet using hashtag MonsterCatPodcast and tell us where you're tuning in from. Hello everyone, let's take that off, and there's our faces. We are going into NYU versus Rochester Institute of Technology. Um, as you can see, NYU with a lot of Archon teams last uh, last year, because it was last year, it was actually the first half of the, uh, the season, but last year. Hello Rifkin. Hi Zombie Grub, I missed you, how you been? Did you really? I don't nope. Know. I fell the fuck asleep the second we finished casting. Man, so did I. Like, <laughs> I just, I like, I got like, I got my shoes on, right? And I was like, okay, I think I'm gonna finally get sushi today. Let's do this. And then I lay down on bed and I was like, oh, that was a mistake. Yeah. I just fell asleep with my shoes on. <laughs> First off, that that's surprising. But also, my cat managed to sit on my tummy. I was like, well, I guess I'm not getting up, and if I'm lying here, I might as well sleep. Oh, uh, well, uh, we already have the game set up, so that's already nice. Um, mm. This time I have the map border. I have notes to remind myself to put the game hard overlay on when we go to the 2v2. I am Wait, like, all many, set uh, to go. How many best of fives are tonight? Is it just one or two? It is two best of fives tonight. Oh, wonderful. And we are getting into the first game. So like I said, it's going to be NYU versus uh, RIT, I guess is their abbreviation, for Rochester Technology, Institute of Technology. Um, it's going to be Shoe versus Poke Bunny. So names that we certainly recognize. It was NYU Shoe. Yeah, this, this looks more like you, uh, like an NA qualifier. Yeah. From, say a year ago. 
Yeah, definitely. Uh, and hopefully this will make like for a really good game since we are back into the 1v1 section of things. Now, we're not completely done with Archon mode. I know like, if many of you are familiar with last season, it was all Archon. This time, it's a best of five consisting of best uh, or 1v1, 1v1, 2v2, Archon, and then another 1v1. So We'll get more into that after the introduction. Introductions. Ooh, uh. In the top right, on Ruins of Saras, as the purple Protoss, it is uh, NYU's shoe. Woo! <clears throat> and in the upper left, I guess, uh, playing for Rochester, mm -hmm. we've got the red Terran, the talk show master, the chatty Cathy, none other than Poke Bunny. Apparently not Team Ascension. He uh, recently shaved his scruff off on stream. Oh. And that turned into an estranged talk show, which I took part of. So that's what started it. That, that makes sense. <laughs> One thing leads to another, and boom, what do you know? You're hosting a talk show for StarCraft 2. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's a slippery slope, isn't it? So, um... Lazy writing is what that is. <laughs> yeah, because it's a slippery slope. One thing led to another. Mm-hmm. It's pretty lazy. Um, we do have both of these guys opening up pretty standard, although Shu is going for a Nexus first, which um, could be a problem if the Reaper actually gets over here. If he's going to scout his location, so it should be able to get something done. Maybe one or two probes that otherwise would not have gotten, but shouldn't be such a big deal. The Nexus first should actually make up for that. So you mentioned, and we kind of made a small joke getting into the game, about how this looked like something from, say, a year ago, and... Uh, for those, I guess, who don't know, Shu was actually a uh, fairly, not, not super prominent, but a very active player. And before loading into the game, one of the things he says, you know, shout out to uh, Clarity Gaming, one of, his, one of his older teams that used to be around for a while. Kind of a bit of a throwback. It was him and Bales and a couple others, and they're... Yeah, uh, intense, like... I mean, anyone who Fear Dragon is a fan of right now was probably on Clarity at one point, so... <laughs> That is a terrible go. way to phrase it, but an incredibly accurate one, nonetheless. It really is. Um, so that's, I mean, that's also why I got to know a lot of these guys. Uh, I actually saw Intense probably was my first Terran crush, you know? Because back, I, first of my cast, I think it was probably Zerg. That was like Drew? four, like three to four years ago. I was like, this Intense guy looks pretty good. All right. Yeah, so, Intense, uh, Intense still looks very good. Uh, his gameplay, I, I want to see good things from him, basically. Yeah, I thought you were like, yeah, he still looks good. And I was like, four years ago, he was like 15. Like, yeah. Rifkin, come on. Now. I mean, you were young enough for that to be okay. Four years uh, ago, I thought he was still I still was not, no. I would not be okay with that. <laughs> no, it's both of them okay. Um, so I thought he was uh, obviously like going to transfer the probes, and he might still have to, but it was actually trying to deal with that bunker, which was really odd. Uh, but it did distract, you know? I, I got the probes pulled off, like, a little bit easier to target fire. Reaper's doing a lot more damage than it should because you know what? The Mothership, of course, is still not coming out. It's still probes. Yeah. Um, going for the double stalker does not mean that he couldn't afford the Mothership Core. Look at his resources and his gas right now. I just think he might have forgotten it. <laughs> okay, uh, so this this is, I'd say, a bigger mistake than it looks like. At, at the end of this, he kills about four workers, and that's not too devastating. But it's just... Seeing a small mistake like that early on alerts you. Like if you're if you're going for a match up that has like really fast oracles, you skip the mothership core because you need the gas to do so. This stalker push can actually be shut down by minor production in a small SCV pool. So I feel like the value of skipping the mothership core for this is not worth it for Shu. Yeah. I mean we see uh, skip mothership cores for Except you know faster stargates or faster twilight councils. Isn't that that much faster? I think uh, shoot. high ground. I like that too. If if Pokemon had actually pushed out and chased, like that's that's StarCraft 101 stuff right there. Like use the high ground vision when you can. Takes yeah. out the zealot really quickly. That was really nicely handled. Yeah. And there finally is a mothership core, and that's why that counts so in a robo. So um like I said, the, the 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 Reaper getting four kills instead of just two, it was more than you would want to give it. But the Nexus kind of makes up for that for how quick it was uh put down. Uh, we actually I don't think I made the Oh, I must be doing this by habit now. I actually did make the crap mod. What? I don't even remember. I used the BTTV mod. And I didn't oh, think nice. I did, but... <laughs> oh, so we got graphs. Hype! 
<laughs> yeah, um, so I guess I was trying to show that maybe it wasn't so bad, but actually Poke Bunny, uh, mewling this natural, still really takes the lead. Of course, it's differential, so this would be like, in a really bad situation, like actually plus 500, not just a plus 150, but uh, still. Yeah, okay, maybe I, that. I will say this, by there the way. Go. Like, I think our mods are the most superior so far. Graph mods and beta, and it's like, I miss it every time we don't have it. Oh, I thought you were, like, making a joke about our moderators. <laughs> I was like... No, Gina's the worst, and Mr. Board's <laughs> Minecraft. Don't even get me started. No, no, but, like, 100% seriousness. Like, our mod, our graph mods, like, super good. Yeah, it's it's really nice. We're finding more situations to be perfect. Is, what? is it bugged out? What the fuck? For you, maybe? Oh, your camera went to a barracks in the middle of the fight. I don't think that actually oh, happened. Oh, no, it did not actually happen. <laughs> I was like, why would she be looking at this random-ass barracks? But, okay, cool. Uh, it's still on the barracks. I have to now use my own. Important to notes. note, there's a barracks. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Actually, what is important to note is that it is a two-base build as opposed to a three-base. So this is kind of the, the standard way to play TVP. Um, and it's a fine way to play TVP in Legacy of the Void as well, but we do have other versions, other styles coming into play as well. BCQD showcasing some more passive play. Uh, of course, just getting up to Liberators. Uh, tanks now becoming bigger in the matchup as well, but if this is the way that you've been used to for a very long time. <laughs> uh, you're going to be most comfortable with it. It's actually the way that she was playing too, kind of unfortunately. Um, Protoss, you have better units than the, uh, the Blink Stalker, but he has a couple of adepts and, you know, it's fine. Okay, well, the Marines and the Marauder count is actually high enough that this is kind of dangerous. The, the I mean, the Immortal can only do so much. It's going to bury your pop and die immediately. Fighting the Proton Overcharge is a good choice for Shu, so Poke Bunny is not going to get uh, away with too much here until the Overcharge runs out, but as we can see, it doesn't cover too much area, and he just decides to walk around it. Yeah, the Militia Corps doesn't really have that many Proton Overcharge. He still has one more, so... Uh, enough to defend, but why isn't Boke Bunny just delete like deleting, uh, <laughs> killing this third, third base? Well, I mean, deleting it would still be an anchor way to phrase that, I suppose. <laughs> I guess so. Uh, that attack was also without combat shields, just just about to finish up here. So um, his units base are going to get better and better. Targeting down the stalkers maybe his best bet because they will be going down the fastest to his marauders. The adepts actually can take uh, a few hits, and of course, well, the immortal can as well. The sentries wouldn't have been a bad pick off either. Get rid of that guardian shield. Uh, there was a drop in the main base, looks like. Yeah. Gonna uh, focus on uh, some of the uh, warp in reinforcements. Get some mothership core, though. Boosts away. None of stalkers to give chase. Now that third base is under attack once again, but can and should probably pick these up. Or uh, just run away. One, one of the big things that Terran has going for them, and has been the case since forever, is they're really good at retaining units. You know, that's where the medevacs really come in. So you take small engagements, and you gain leads off of it. Protoss and Zerg are gonna have to trade indefinitely, and that's why you see the matchup look so different on both sides. Bunny, uh, Poke Bunny, excuse me, though, has not been trading so well, and he's been sacrificing a lot of units to dive in and get these couple extra kills. So he doesn't have this huge lead right now, but he's he would and could if he would just save some of these units. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you gotta get to that point where they start actually having enough adepts and enough stalkers to start chasing off these small drops like this. Uh, the mortal helping out looks a little bit silly because usually that has to be on the front lines, but it is indeed helping out. And actually, Shoo getting confident enough to push out in the middle of the map. Actually, could take on that army, but reinforces the, right there. The plus one for the Terran is really nice in this situation. And he's third base. If it was down, he'd have a lot to fall back to. But now he's building a bunch of defensive bunkers. I think Pokemon, he's oh. kind of misread the situation a little bit here. Oh. <laughs> he didn't like that bunker. <laughs> Couldn't just cancel it. <laughs> oh, all right, your camera. I can't use it. That's looking at a draw. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> uh, don't worry, you didn't miss anything other than the drop getting pretty much killed. There's like one Marine in that medevac in the top right now. Oh, there's uh, it like three units in that. Yeah, um, you said the bunkers, and it went over there, and he just killed his own bunker instead of canceling it. <laughs> Nailed it! <laughs> uh, yeah, this one Marine is really, like, even if it did not have any units here, the probes could have pulled it against it. So, ah, uh, it's finally going to go down. The observer to see the army moving out, and now he knows that uh, with the medevac uh, you know, dealt with, just pull on the front lines. He also saw Storm with that uh, failed drop. Pretty important to note, because Storm is going to be something that's going to maybe wreck him if he's not careful. Mm, maybe. Well, that war prism looks a little odd. It's, it's helping reinforce something that already has fast reinforcements. Yeah. 
Uh, blink forward to try and get a medevac on a bad snipe right there, but that is a pretty nice Protoss army. We do have more depth sprinkled in to tank those shots. The blink stalker is going to be useful for the medevacs, and of course the high templars are now set in the back, and they are about to have storm one a pop. Okay, well that's three more. <laughs> nice snipe by poke bunny. We get unit canning station right now. We do have a large marauder count, so even if there are storms, this might not be too terrifying. And a massive amount of Marauders are actually going to be good against these Adepts, but... Yeah, this is something where Shu's economy is not looking bad, and he's taking a fourth in a situation where his economy should look bad, and he shouldn't be taking a fourth. Yeah, I mean, Poke Bunny's taking his own fourth right now, too, although his third's not really all that saturated. Right, he like only just placed it down, yeah. that's, I think, one of the problems here. Yeah, um, Shu's army just is looking better and better. Uh, with Storm added in, it uh, could be better if the Ghosts do not get the EMP. So maybe start thinking about uh, other units add in here. Um, mo like more de or more Immortals rather would not be a bad idea. Colossus is a little up in the air. Lonite has been using it, and of course Disruptor is a possibility, but not on Shu's mind right now. Classes would certainly be interesting to see how that looks on the more amateur side of things, whereas we've only seen it in the one exclusive matchup with Night End. But uh, at any rate, the armies here—it's it, kind of funny because either player could actually wipe the other's army out. There's a that harass on the other side, I guess. So a couple of adepts get by. Snipes, uh, snipes. actually being wasted. Yeah, that's energy wasted for an army that you want to EMP soon. Hmm. Yeah, actually, I would argue that one snipe was really, really bad, and he might not even realize it. Uh, three more ghosts are on the way. If you can just wait for those, then I'll have enough EMPs. Hopefully, they catch the, the, the High Templars in the back. Now, the Warp Prism, I guess, is still in the main base, actually. Yeah, still doing damage, but could provide those instantaneous reinforcements, or almost instant. Used to be a lot quicker before there was a patch. Ugh. Fourth base now uh, will happily set up, not happily mining quite yet for shoes on 63 probes. Uh, yeah, he'll get, he'll get around to that soon. Finally being cleaned up. Trying to. It's a question mark. <laughs> uh, well, this warp in's not being too devastating, and again, a large part of this is thanks to the ghosts and their auto attack damage. Uh, it is the fearsome bank of Shu that becomes a little bit scary here for Poke Bunny. His army's nowhere close to maxing out. Uh, he doesn't even have enough supply to max out. But Shu, on the other hand, he can throw down five more pylons and warp in all the zealots in the world. He needs to actually get maxed out. Uh, speaking of zealots, too, very interesting. No zealots. No charge, ah, and also no resonating say. glaives. Yeah, the resonating glaives can come in and help the main army. You know, the adepts are still tanky. You might still want them, and to have them do more damage is nice. Oh, from the back, the storms are pretty good. Oh, Jesus. Nice flank. Oh, Marauders dang. getting really low. One more storm's going to kill so many units. Adepts are just going to try and transfer through this. Use their speed to get around, but oh, I don't cancel? know where they're going. Yeah, okay. <laughs> they went the wrong way. Okay, that was a little bit awkward. Oh, this, this turns the it... army and actually lets Poke Bunny take a decent yeah. fight. Yeah, yeah, that really turned it sour. No. Uh, it looks like it's still going to be a surround for Shu, though. If you only had one more storm to you the heart what? of that army. But here's why this army, like, Shu should have walked over this fight if he had upgrades. Poke Bunny's on 2-2 two, uh, two, while Shu's sitting on nothing. There's yeah. no resonating glaives. There's no weapon upgrades. And what's kind of, di like, disgusting to look at here, and this is 100% not a balance line, but just an observation, he's still winning this fight despite the fact that his upgrades are so garbage. Now, this starts turning around because some good EMPs land, new adepts warp in, but that upgrade disadvantage is really showing now. Yeah. I mean, that is an excellent point. The only reason that he even, you know, started to lose that fight was that the storms hit the majority of his army twice, like, three times, and that's just not what you want. But otherwise, his army should be taking the better fight. And, uh, yeah, the upgrades, the actual 1-1 one, one or 2-2 two, two is definitely missing. I think she was just forgotten about it by now. Like, where are your cannons, like, to help defend or something to alert you to get some forges? Uh, but also, yeah, that charge is missing. I mean, adepts can be okay. Oh, the person goes down. Right, so... Adepts against Bio in general has been alright, but Adepts against Marauders? Forget about it. This is where you want the Zealots, this is where you want that damage and that charge. That much hasn't changed since Haas, but I think she was a little too tunnel visioned at this point on the wrong on the wrong things. Yeah, and he might just lose the uh, the end game here. I mean, his, his mid game was starting to look okay with those storms, but uh, as we get into the late game, especially if Pokemon starts adding on any Liberators, it's going to be a game for our Protoss player. Probably is already. Look at that uh, army supply. Well, Poke Buddy, a hardcore getting carried by his upgrades here. He did have double forge. Ah, <laughs> I don't know that's, when he got that's that. That's more infuriating. I wish we didn't see that. <laughs> right. Oh, jeez. Uh, that is that is going to be game. There's no more. There's Okay, maybe there's one more storm. 
Um, but the Marauders can actually tank a storm, even two storms. Yep. What kind of surprised me a little bit about this, I mean, Poke Bunny used to be a pro gamer, so it's true, so it's kind of like, there's not a lot of excuses to be made here. Uh, GG. Well, I was going to say, NYU has been carrying hard through most of the matches we've been casting, so little surprise to see NYU take a dive in this first game. Yeah. Actually, their scores reflect that too on the uh, screen before we actually jumped in here, that uh, NYU has been, well, there's only been one game, but they've been... 1-0, well, the uh, other team is actually 0-1, so they would appreciate the win. So we're still on week two, and there's uh, a lot more weeks to go, of course. I think I do but, have... Yeah, the format for this is a little bit different, folks. Well, Zombie Rob figures out what's going on next. Just to explain, it's not like one best of five between these two players. It ends up being almost like a team best of five. So you'll have... Poke Bunny take the first point for his team, but I don't think he can play again until later in the Archon mode or the 2v2. So different players to step forward. Uh, then after that, we jump into a 2v2, and then after that, we jump to an Archon mode match to settle the score. And yeah. uh, this can go five games deep, should it require, but usually these have been ending at about, uh, you know, 2-1s, 3-1s, sorry, excuse me, because I can do best of math. Yeah. Um, le yesterday we saw we had a treat, six games for best of five, because there actually <coughs> was a um, misunderstanding of the rule about who can come back later. So it, the gist is that you can play twice but not three times, but it's actually specific to the, uh, I want to say the 2v2? Um, I actually have it on Skype though, so I can, I can look that up. Um, it, you know, was a case of they actually got like seven minutes into the fifth game, the ace match, and, um, I mean, luckily the person who was winning ended up winning, but, uh, still, that was a very awkward situation to get a reset for the, the, the people who were losing. Uh, Alright, we're just waiting for NYU to send out their second player. Um, uh, we got I Love Colorin giving up for Rochester again, and this guy was Poke Bunny's Archon Med partner in the first half of the season. Uh, pretty good combination of the two. We're one okay. of the better Archon mode teams. Yeah. Uh, it's the Archon mode, so they can be fielded for basically a 1v1 in an Archon mode, or 2v2 in an Archon mode, I guess. Um, but then they can't be used for the ace match, uh, and that's a, that is what happened last time, so hopefully everyone has that in their mind. I mean, they, they send them... I'm I'm looking at the um, the lineup already, but they don't have the ace match. You know, they, they know the first four... Um, games for each other, so they can kind of play around with that, but they don't know who would be the ace match, the matchup. Um, they know the map, but... <laughs> I, I don't think that's a terrible thing, but it is kind of funny to me where you're like, uh, all right, you know, got to get those counter picks out because you're scared of Flash coming out in the ace, man. You know what? Yeah. <laughs> okay there, guys. Come on. Uh, we do have, like, I mean, the whole setup really is to help alleviate the whole, like, one-player star, like the Flash of the, the teams, you know? And we certainly yeah. have those for some of these teams. We expect to see Suppy, like, if he was at all-kill format, all-kill for his team, or, or Shu, or Poke Bunny, right? Um, but by disallowing them at least a third shot, um, that, that helps a little bit. So... It is 1v1 still. It is Star Elf and Elva Coloring. I just don't know where Star or yeah, Star Elf is. Looks like NYU's coordinator is actually here. Um, he's been one of the best coordinators, I think. He's, I think he's always seen his name because he's also a player, so that, that helps, I think. Plays with his team. Um, if you don't know what the Collegiate Star League is, and by now I'm guessing most of you do, <laughs> we're probably going to have a lot of return, so, <laughs> return customers, it is what it sounds like. So it's like, you know, those real sports uh, on college teams, but instead it's eSports on college teams. So it's Hearthstone, CSGO, Dota, LOL, and of course StarCraft 2. And it's, it's cool because they are all playing to win scholarship money, and not like a bad amount of scholarship money either. Uh, you can find out more on their Twitter, C Star League, or of course their website, CStarLeague.com. Huh, okay. Dang, Huck uh, didn't make the IEM qualifier cut, by the way, apparently. You did it Scarlet. Twitter. And, uh... This is, I mean, it, on one hand it's good, because it means there's good enough talent that can take them out, but it's also surprising, oh, because you're like, wow, those are players you assume kind of have a shoe in to, to win, you know? Yeah, well, you know, yesterday they, Huck knocked Scarlet out, so I thought he would just win it all, and, well, apparently he didn't. <laughs> Um, huh, interesting. Hmm. I'm looking at the uh, brackets right now. We got Iastinu doing quite well. He's playing against Bales. Puck versus Drunken Boy. Pig versus State. Jim versus Panda Bear Me. Like, 
in in all sincerity, those are good players in the round of eight. Like it, they're not suffering for having lost Huck, but it's or, or Scarlet for that matter. But again, surprising to me that both both would lose. And probably <laughs> the funny thing is, if you if we were to talk to either of them, they'd discuss the racial balance. If I had to guess, <laughs> Protoss is dumb. No, Zerg is dumb. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, probably. Well, uh, we are going into the game number two. We have Staro for NYU, I believe. And, yeah. Yep. And I love Colorin for... Uh, Rochester. RIT. Yep. There we go. Uh, Let's hope my camera doesn't break on you this time. <laughs> just went over what it was. There we go. All right. So, on the bottom right, as the yellow Zerg, he's I love Colorin. All right, and he's got some pings on the map. Shows where he wants to go, I guess. The top left, it's going to be NYU's Star Elf. Why is it that I don't see his pings? Like, I don't mind. I'm wondering, I'm wondering if there's something, because, you know, this is becoming a recurring thing. I'm wondering if there's something like your game, like F10 gameplay. Like, do you have flyer tips enabled? Um, I've got, like, every <laughs> checkbox here checked off except for display team colored life bars. I mean, because it doesn't affect me in game. I see like pings when we're playing, so I guess I'll look at the uh, it afterwards. Like, it's either that no, or I, Blizzard I, I, heard how much I was complaining and was like, "Oh, don't give her pings." No, I'm, I'm actually just curious. If you go to your gameplay options like right now, do you have all the boxes checked off or? Um, okay, I guess I can I can do that. Here's. Because yeah. the only ones I don't have simple command card and I don't have team colored life bars and that's it. Let's see. I don't have. Select all larva, current order indicator, experience points, colorblind mode, or display team colored life bar. I don't think any of that would affect. You. What about uh, show flyer helper or? Uh, none. Uh, I don't know then. I've got no idea. You just screwed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's so strange. It's so strange that you don't see it. Uh, I don't know. Blizzard heard my complaints, I suppose. Um. It, it, in some situations, actually, it can be fun, like in the Archon mode, if we do get there. Uh, so basically, RIT could 3-0 at, in the next, well, here, of course, 2-0, and then at the 2v2, 3-0, and then that's it. That's, that's done once in Archon mode. But if it does go to Archon mode, pings can actually be very handy. Some of these guys aren't on Skype together. Some of them are right next to each other in the same dorm room. I mean, it could be any of the above. But <clears throat> it's pre on terraces, and both Zergs went for gold base, just to the different gold bases. Why? ZVZ hype? <laughs> That's my answer. Well, I mean, why did Star Elf take this one? Show me a moose. I guess it's one of those things where, and it sounds so silly, right? But with the amateurs playing in the CSL, scouting is mm -hmm. probably already iffy enough as is. And there's a good chance that I Love Color and actually doesn't scout that way. Except, never mind, he already did. So I've got no clue. No clue that. <laughs> I, I don't know. Um... I'm not ready to knock it yet. I mean, we just got schooled on Ruins of Saras, like, Scarlet showing up in our chat, being like, this is why they took the third. And... Schooled. Yeah, right? I don't, I'm so, like, I was thinking about that while I was passing out in my bed. I'm like, then why do the Koreans still take it? And I passed out. <laughs> 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 I don't know. That was, that was her final thoughts, guys. And then we never <laughs> saw Zombie Grub again. <laughs> Basically, it was. Um, a bit of a link scuffle, of course, one that Star Elf would definitely win with the current amounts for I Love Coloring, but I like when we go Spine Crawler, so, like, this definitely usually says, I'm going to be defensive, like, you don't have to worry about me counterattacking you, but it's usually never the case, usually you have, um, an excess of lings because you defended, and you just, you have to counterattack, really. Actually, moves the Spine Crawler over just in time for the Bane Lings, uh, it's possible they would run up the ramp, but, of course, there's no natural, so they'd have to run up this ramp, too, and I don't know if Star Elf wants to try and do that. Well, it's a little bit dicey with the banelings. There's a lot of them coming into play soon, and that spine crawler needs to live so it can focus them down and keep those gold drones alive. He's already tempted to split them and run. Oh, uh, and doing so would make them susceptible to the links, but here comes those banelings oh, in. Jesus. Unfortunately, I love colorants are not ready to go. So some pop out here. Queen goes down. Drones are playing Rosie. Rosie. Rosy. Oh my god, he does end up splitting those banelings too. He's afraid he's gonna go for two for three. Oh, okay, they go for three for but... three in the middle. <laughs> But there's still not a lot here to defend. Oh, they're actually the new wave of lings are going to chase us back. I am astonished that Colorin held that because he did not do that well, but he did it well enough. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm losing two drones. They were on perfectly even drones. Oh, no, they weren't. 
Star Elf must have been down by four drones. Hey oh. So now he's uh, only down by two because that helps a little bit. I love Killer Bogus goes back in a droning because hey, he hasn't seen any lings pop out. The ling uh, the larva pop I guess was a little off, but now he sees them pop out and has to get uh, you know the queen of course, but his own banelings and oh his own lings just run into the banelings. That is never good. Ouch. Mmm, the NYU might take this game back. More Banelings pop for I Love Coloring, but there's still a lot more Lings. He's trying to get Lings. He's trying to get a Roach one right now, too. And He's there are the finally count. the drone kills. He's even up the count. Uh, he's taking the lead now, and... The Banelings are going to make this really hard for Coloring to defend. I mean, as you point out, he's getting a Roach one, but the Roaches themselves are so oh, far geez. away. Oh, Star geez. also aggressive moves coming in for the hit. It's going to be like hitting the Death Star. Torpedoes going into that one little vent. G G. G G. Every single drone dies. Zero workers remain. All right, that's going to be one one, and why he takes it back. And we're gonna go into two v two now. So remember the overlay. I got it. I just got it. Have you, uh, I brought up the Expanse in our scrape group once, and I assume no one, like, bothered watching it, right? Like, you didn't. Just, you're not gonna Correct. be like, actually, excuse you. <laughs> okay. Um, actually, I really enjoyed it. The first five episodes are my favorite. <laughs> I didn't really like number six, though. Yeah. I haven't watched it so much either, to be honest. Like, the first episode was cool, but. I hear a lot about it, but I just, eh. My mom, I got my mom to watch it, because she, like, also liked the sci-fi show. She actually said it was pretty slow and boring. So I don't know if I'm going to finish watching it. Anyways, they have this thing where they're basically trying to start civil war by masquerading as each other, like, factions, and being like, you killed something? No, you killed something. Okay, let's go to war, you know? That old cliche storyline. Okay, it's Seething Jungle. Um, anyways, and they say, remember the cant. Is how they kill people <laughs> when they want to kill people. <laughs> oh, you're on, you're on Mars? Remember the cant. Pop. They're dead. Okay, I'm not following this at all. Is this, I'm sorry, is this a reference to something or just total like, ADD? A little bit ADD, because I, okay. I said remember the something after we ended that game, and now I can't remember. <laughs> okay. Because now I've been trying to get uh, four players into the game. is so much harder than two. Okay, well, here we go now. Uh, let me real idea and I'll ease some of those woes. Oh, it's actually 2v2. Griffith, Vicious Viper are not. Oh, here's a go. Here's one of them. Yeah, and here's the second one. Nailed it. And Call Me Steve and Gosu Gangnam. Who we have cast before. I remember this 2v2 team. I remember Call Me Steve because I think, wasn't this one of the guys who wanted to come visit you at uh, NYU? Yes. It is. Call me Steve. That's what your boyfriend says. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> it's not like. <laughs> if it's correct. <laughs> I should be weird. Like, okay, so you go to like meet Simon Grove's boyfriend and you're like, what's up, Howard? He'll be like, call me Steve. And you're like, oh, you're from the CSL? <laughs> yep. That sounds like that's a totally plausible situation that happens frequently. That's totally what he's going to like. Does anyone ever say call me blank? Like, maybe we do. Because some everyone's always like, do you call you Zombie Grub or Jessica? And I'm like, just just say Zombie Grub. The name's Rifkin. You can call me Rifkin. Yeah, but no one's ever like, hey, how you doing in real life? Like, call me Jessica. Well, can I call you something else? No, but... Hey, hey Jesse, how you doing? Oh, please don't. What's wrong, Jesse? Yo, Jesse's girl... <laughs> Just he's a guy in that song. Doesn't make any sense. Well, I mean, we've been over so many times with how I find you so handsome, so we're like halfway there. Okay, it's not rude to call someone handsome. It is a little rude to insinuate that they look more and more mannish. <laughs> <laughs> it's just throwing it out there. It's 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 compliment with a mask, I guess. I don't know. Whatever. An insult with a mask. There you go. Hmm. Well, right, we're trying to get the uh, 2v2 set up. So 2v2's got a pretty interesting map pool. For those who haven't seen it, the uh, team game maps are actually all somewhat interesting. The nice thing about the 2v2 maps, though, opposed to the 3v3 and 4v4s, is nobody gets dicked over randomly. Because there are a couple of 3v3 maps and a couple of 4v4 maps where three players or two players will spawn together and then one guy's out on his own. And you're like, well, I'm glad I got this spawn location. Yeah. Now, this map... Um... 
it does have the like you share a base, but um, it doesn't have any like pocket bases behind you, uh, safe bases, shall we call them? So, I know when we did our two v two tournaments, it had a different map pool, and that's the the one that everyone picked because you could actually get to a decent yeah. macro game with it. Um, this still not so much. Two v two is always try and be cheesy, and the maps just unfortunately heighten that. Okay, they're ready. Ready, ready, ready. <clears throat> Seething jungle. Because it's angry. I don't... Because of deforestation, or...? I always imagine people think that jungles are angry because there's so much, like, mist and fog, and it's all just, like, shrouded in mystery, and I guess mystery's scary. <laughs> Never really been in a jungle, to be honest. Like, I've been in the forest, but jungle? No. Where do we even go to one of those in America? Uh, you could... I don't know, there's gonna be some sort of dumb theme park. <laughs> That's probably true. I can go to a jungle gym. <laughs> those exist everywhere. Ah, I nailed it! Oh, damn it. I, uh, what? Ah! Oh, way to go. You nailed nothing. We gotta go to Sludge City, girl. So, that makes it a little bit awkward, because on Tuesday, which is also week two, I asked what map, Seething Jungle, and they were like, yep. <laughs> so, we definitely played on Seething Jungle on Tuesday. Awkward. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'm not gonna bother going into out of game screen. You guys can watch me build this. It's like watching people play Minecraft. I don't know why you guys do it. How is this like Minecraft? In what way is this possibly even like Minecraft? Watching someone just build You're not building something a lobby. like no, you don't. You you no. This is outrageous. It's it's about as fun as Minecraft, and that's mostly where I was going with it. <laughs> Like wow, look at the look at the clicks. Like look at the she's like inviting the people, and it's just it's uh, it's pretty entertaining. <laughs> I got a joke for you, zombie girl. What? What's green, fuzzy, and if it fell out of a tree, it would kill you. What? A pool table. That's true. Apparently, someone in London gets stabbed every fifty-two seconds. Poor guy. Is that related? How do you find Will Smith in the snow? How? You look for the Fresh Prince. Ha! <laughs> I definitely thought that was going to be more racist. <laughs> whoa, whoa, calm down. Join the game. Yes, Mom. <laughs> a hot blonde orders a double entendre at the bar. The bartender gave it to her. <laughs> That's pretty funny. What's that, Rifkin? You're just googling jokes while you wait? Yeah, I was gonna yep. say, is someone like feeding you jokes or what's happening? You wanna hear a word I just made up? Plagiarism. Ha! Huh. I got nothing. I'm not returning this joke. Thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm just Rifkin. Okay, thank god. We're on the right map with the, wrap o the right overlay. Pluh. And it is now Sludge City, which is a little more interesting. I guess we'll take a tour after the introductions. Okay, the one last one. One no, last one. Oh, God. Okay, fine. Why do, why do cows have bells? Why? Because their horns don't work. Well, cows don't have horns. Some cows do, actually. Yeah, bulls. <laughs> no. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, they might have really tiny ones when I think about it. <laughs> I haven't thought about a cow ever, the, so... <laughs> it is not true, as commonly believed, that bulls have horns and cows do not. The presence of horns depends on the breed. A word horn breeds on whether the horns have been disbudded. Oh, snap. Thank you, Google, so, for wrecking zombie grub. I mean, I already admitted defeat. I was always like, actually, you might be right. <laughs> so, <laughs> way to go. <laughs> In the top left on Sludge City for RIT, it is the Purple Zerg Griffith. 
and the orange Protoss Vicious Viper. Nice name. I like that. The uh, <laughs> NYU team down here in the bottom side. Give me the dark blue Zerg. Call me Steve. I like Steve. And go to Gungam. Mm hmm. So what's kind of interesting is all these other teams that are kind of rotating their players around, whether it's Rochester or the other colleges we've been casting, I don't recognize a lot of those names. But NYU is all the good players that we cast in the previous seasons of uh, CSL. So this is a little awkward. I have to, like, <laughs> move the overlay a little bit. Okay. Oh, the CSL overlay, yeah. Hey, Zombie Grub, that what did the pirate say when he turned 80? Arr, I'm dead. <laughs> I matey. Oh, yeah. I knew that so, joke. Pylons coming down on mass look a little bit silly, and the Zerglings are certainly getting aggressive. Uh, for Rochester here, one of the big things he's going to be able to do is, yeah, cancel that base, because it would have been a kill otherwise. Uh, Mothership Core and such coming across the map. But this is... Is he going to let the pylons complete? Uh, okay. Sure, it's um, going to be cannons. Yeah, I guess so. So a lot more cannons. It's certainly going to stop them from taking this space, but Sludge City actually has... One person gets kind of dicked over, the other person has a bit of a safe goal. So uh, Gosu Gangnam is going straight Gangnam style right here and just getting rich while his opponent dies. <laughs> or his teammate <laughs> dies, was, actually. That was better than most of my jokes. <laughs> Um, this is a situation where, unfortunately, you can just, you, you, you should probably just be like, try and survive as long as you can. Like, I can't help you. Um, we're going to die. <laughs> I was saying maybe if they could have walled off this, this ramp, and I don't think with the Zerg, they would have done it in time. Uh, hey, Zerg holds. So, not, not so bad. Um, it's for now, but one of the things is like these cannons, three, four, as four, four, funny three. as they are, and you know, they're not going to end the game per se, they do provide that sort of contain. Like, we're not going to see these lings from blue come across the map anytime soon. They're also forcing him to invest in more spine crawlers. Uh, light blue, uh, Gusugan, ah. had to invest in this bunker at the top of his own ramp. Keep making SUVs, build something, you have the under minerals. Yeah, that's not good. Floating money. You can give it to his friend, I suppose. And maybe he is. Uh, I think trading ends at three minutes now instead of, what was it, was it five before? Or trading begins. Uh, oh, begins, bad. right. It's, I think it's at five minutes or so. Uh, I'm actually not sure. We don't play this enough for me to know the timing on that. Um, but Zombie What's up? How do you think the unthinkable? I just did. With an iceberg. Okay. <laughs> I get it. I get it. So, this could have uh, been a case with so many minerals ground. that there could have been easily these two racks already done and probably right. more uh, marines, but the macro was kind of missed up on from I mean, our teal Terran. Even, even if not more marines, just having more bunkers down even. Just anything. Yeah. Like, SCVs getting pulled into this, there could have been more SCVs. Macro from Ghost of Gundam really slipping and it's costing him. Now, he should be able to deal with the cannons on the high ground. In fact, I'd be shocked if he doesn't. At least pick off this probe and stop him from coming in. Because you can lift up and move your barrel things around his terror and buy yourself a little bit of time. But, uh, yeah, he's, he's uh, unfortunately not getting a lot done. Other side of the map looks like there's a counterattack in the orange base, but that gets cleaned up. Yeah, I, so. I think he still has... No, he does speed things, but yeah, it was cleaned up pretty easily. Oh, he doesn't save that barracks. That's unfortunate. Um... Yeah, yeah, and his other barracks is still stalled out here, so still on two barracks production with no add-ons. It's got like a thousand minerals banked behind this, though. A siege tank has only just begun. I mean, uh, links are going to keep flooding in. I kind of feel like this is this is borderline over. Like, I, I hate to call it so soon. It's just uh, blue is unfortunately stuck in his base. Light blue is, he has a natural base down with a gold. That's cool, but he can't use the money he's gaining from it. Well, what's odd is that... No one is really in a good economic position quite yet. We still have purple Zerg despite having a gold base on actually using it. And our Protoss only recently got this natural, and of course they did delay tech more than anything else with the cannon rush. Now they're starting to get the gateways. I mean, once again, we have Protoss being kind of the best man standing at the end of the day with the most economy. That seems to be the... Uh, That's how a lot of the 2v2s are. Yeah, yeah, for whatever reason. And usually, you know, because Protoss has, like, the inability to get a pl plenty of units in the early game, that's usually the first one to die, is, is the stereotype. But um, if they are the ones to live, then they have a lot of opportunities to end the game. They have those those bulky, tough units that could actually slice and dice through a bunker or, or an immortal. 
But it looks like you're finally going to see Call Me C. You just have to legitimately tap out of the game. Unfortunately, Ghost of Gangnam, his partner, never gave him any money. I, I've been trying to pay attention to that to see what would happen. And I don't think it ever did. Um, okay, his bailing's actually finished. <laughs> and, and hold off for a little while longer, but... Uh, Gosu Gangnam still very slowly clearing up the cannons, cannot come over to help. As long as the Hatchet doesn't die, he could survive. A thousand yeah, minerals, no the minerals, because he's certainly got money to send. I mean, this is what... It, it, it was a hard decision to say, like, okay, buddy, sorry, you're gonna die, like, let me get what I got get, or to send the money, and, um, I think if the Terran had actually played the macro side of things pretty perfectly, it would have been better for him to just let his, his partner die, but as we see, now banking 1,300 minerals, the macro was really not perfect, and letting his partner die is really going to hurt. The hatch is going to go down, and they're... Well, actually, there's one drone. I don't know where. Here you are, little buddy. Hey, he is and freaking it pretty hard right now. <laughs> little buddy. The hatch is also saved, so he could take this gold base, but once again, like, if this was a perfect scenario for the Terran, saying you take the gold base, like, you probably have an extra command center, right, from the gold base, like, you take it would have been ideal, but there's no extra command center. There's actually a supply block right now. There's an extra command center going down now, but... Everything could have been a lot better for Gosu Gangnam. And unfortunately, like, it, it's it's really harsh of me to like put all this pressure on him. He's like, well, at least I didn't die. That's true. But it is up to him to actually win this game now against uh, two players that finally get their economy back up and running and are looking pretty strong. Well, a little bit of counterattack going off. I really didn't think we'd see this bounce back, to be completely honest with you. And it's still hard to say because Purple's going to have a Spire out soon. And Combination Spire and these Immortals should be able to take on this ground army. Uh, getting this third base is a bit surprising. The fact that the third base is out here is also surprising because look at this. <laughs> yeah, the gold, gold. Uh, Maybe like they, both, they were fighting and they're like, okay, let's just, well, neither of us will take it. All right, we'll, <laughs> we'll never fight over a girl. Also, a gold base. <laughs> The, uh, the army of, of Orange being hallucinated with the Colossus is kind of cool to see. Yeah. There really is no reason for him to take the fight, though. Um, the longer this game goes on, the fa more favorable it is for, you know, um, RIT here. So definitely just take the gold base. For the love of God, one of you take the gold base. <laughs> I've always been curious about this because there's never been an option for a skinned unit in Hallucinations until recently. And I guess, yeah, if you hallucinate a Colossus, you get a skinned hallucinated Colossus. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Nearly useless facts with your dragon? No, that's definitely a useless fact. <laughs> <laughs> Look, a... Well, no, 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 wait a minute, because if it wasn't skinned, but your other Colossus were skinned, then you would know it was hallucination, and Idra would have never tapped out of that game. <laughs> oh my gosh. Can you, <laughs> you please? Know, Skins didn't even exist back then. Uh, no, the Thor skin did, didn't it? You can't hallucinate a Thor. Well, yeah, but that's, you know, you're so wrong. <laughs> Actually, no, I don't know, I don't know if it did. Clutch's edition of Wings of Liberty gave it, but I don't remember there being an option to turn on skins back in Wings, you know? I I don't remember either. I that's I've never I wasn't into StarCraft enough to buy the Clutch's edition. We'd have to find Nathaniel and ask. He's the only person <laughs> in the world who has a Thor skin. Right? Well, that not the non. Mm. Oh, well, never mind. So, uh, look at the supplies right now. Obviously, both Zergs are hurting here, but uh, Blue Zerg is hurting a lot more. <laughs> um, his job might solely be to try and, and act out against the Mutas, because the Mutas will eventually snowball to a point that the Terran can't really deal with it. And one way, too, seems to be to have your own Mutas, but the game is also just going to end before that happens, so... Oh well, never mind. GG? I think that uh, NYU is going to go down in this game. Yep. Colossus actually being kept as... Like, he refreshed new hallucinations. So it looked like this was going to be the case. But, uh, you know, the Missile Turk kind of revealed they were fake when they stepped a little too forward. Mutalus not picking off those last tanks. But now getting on top of them. No more Marines left. And that's... That's the snowball effect. Yeah. Well, they still have the Archon mode match to bring it back, and of course the 1v1 Ace is uh, up in the air, actually. You don't know who the players are for that. The Lucid uh, Colossus finally die, or just time out, either one. And uh, a Liberator now comes into play, he's gonna scare off the Protoss army, but that's what the is for. Ah. Oh my god. What are you doing? Hey. 
This is not safe harbor. <laughs> well, I mean, they're alive, so technically it is. Not for very long. <laughs> no. Uh, Protoss, why are you why are you leaving? Why are you leaving? Come back. You can end the game. Cigarettes. He'll be back. He promises. <laughs> oh, that's usually a desperation scan right there when you already have an orbital lifted. Uh, you don't really want to be wasting scans, but seeing that the third base is in the Protoss's hands here, not a good feeling. Mm -hmm. CSL just tweeted like, "How do they do this so quick?" It's like a highlight clip of my bad jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Retweeted! <laughs> uh, but that's the best thing so far working about them. They're like, they're pretty fast on that. They're pretty fast on getting our troll stuff too. Like, <laughs> we're doing like our terrible American history with Rifkin and Zombie <laughs> <Grub. laughs> Oh god. Okay, I was thinking, yeah, you know, we brought up the drunk history of StarCraft 2, right? And you're like, yeah, we couldn't get actors to play it. And that's still true. <laughs> we would have terrible actors with like friends, right? But it was just like, I mean, like, wouldn't it still work if we just did it over the actual game? <laughs> Like watch Idris versus Hawk and be like, oh, this, 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 this was really good. This is look at look at it. Idris so stupid. Those are loose. But the I think point it'd be of fun. drunk history was like it was really wrong. So you wouldn't be describing the actual situation correctly. Like you wouldn't be telling what? everyone how he how he tagged. No, out. the point of drunk history was that it was it was correct, but it was like stupid correct. It's like correct air quotes. <laughs> Like, the actual, like, you know, gist of the thing, like, you know, the patent thing was actually correct, but of course, you know, the guy didn't call up on his cell phone and go, oh, wait, cell phones don't exist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. Anyways. Oh, Gosu Gangnam has really improved on the macro front after, um, I guess everything just kind of calmed down, but unfortunately, it is too late. You have both... Both players on this side of the field actually um, getting to a very decent point, so you know his, his poor partner is is definitely dragging him down here. I don't know what to say about the situation. Like I really don't know how you recover. And, and more to the point, I'm just more shocked that the other teams let them recover. I mean, we look at the supply counts, and it's it's nothing too insane, but it's just the Thor and the Liberators could actually annihilate an army if done. Yo, know, correctly, I guess. How to uh, say it? Like. Yeah, I mean, absolutely perfectly. The the Ling Muta army is actually the most you know possible to just throw, but the Protoss army is going to exactly. be a lot harder to throw. Um, that that takes quite a lot of the die. It takes a lot of skill to throw away a Protoss army of this size of this lead. Yes, a lot of skill. That's a good way to put it. He's also brave for doing so. Brave and bold <laughs> and courageous and many other adjectives that sound like stupid. But advancing forward, uh, that's just too much of everything. Storm's coming down on top of this. Oh, the the Liberators were a great attempt. I, I mean, I will give it to NYU. They, they did their best to come back from a really shitty opening. They got cheesed hard, but that's, uh, this should be the axe and the, uh, the nail in the coffin. GG, Although I guess the axe, axe in the coffin. The yeah, axe in the coffin would be like, yeah, well, it's lodged in his brain, so he's dead and we couldn't <laughs> remove it, so. That would it, be we're just gonna over. We're just going to bury it with him. Oh, Jesus. Okay, Central Protocol is coming up next for the Archon mode. I should change my overlay back. Oh, Jesus. There we go. I just said it. Central Protocol. And it will be... Let's see here. I Love Colorin, again, with Icarus and Impulse and Death for uh, NYU. Okay. Is that what we What's up? Why does a chicken coop have two doors? What's that? Because if it had four doors, it would be a chicken sedan. Ha! Car jokes. Ha <laughs> ha! I know what cars are. I'm a man. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> wow, it's so desperate. <laughs> Um, okay, so here's the, the tricky thing about what RIT is doing. So by sending out I Love Coloring in both the 1v1 and the Archon mode, he can't go into their ace. Um, I guess that makes sense because Poke Bunny's probably their ace. I was going to say, Poke Bunny, at least with the game he played, looked like a much bigger ace candidate. Yeah, um, but he's also not bad. Um, the last map would be Orbital Shipyard, so yeah, I guess he really wouldn't care about having a Zerg on that map. 
Okay, we got one for each team. That's always annoying. So that makes the score 2-1 for Rochester, correct? Yes, that's true. All right. Pulse and death. Death. What a name. Well, let me join off here. <clears throat> Is death around? I gotta ask for him. Whenever I think of death like that, I always think of the one from Family Guy, like uh, Norm Macdonald voicing him or whatever. <laughs> I always think of um, Dead Like Me, mm. the intro where they're all just like playing basketball and stuff. Okay, so a little bit strange to see this be the Archon mode match. Um, again, if you guys don't know Archon mode, it is basically 1v1 in all its premises. You just have to, two people controlling each team. So it's a little bit uh, a little bit better usually because you, you have less mistakes being made. It's not that both players become greater players in doing so, but they help eliminate a lot of the, I guess, like average mistakes a player can make. Forgetting to inject, uh, leaving units AFK to get picked off in the middle of the map. A lot of that stuff is eliminated through teamwork, which is nice. Hey, apparently, death is MVP. That doesn't bode well for MVP and career right now. Both the team and the player? Man, I'm so mad that I and forgot. The status? Nah. No one ever says MVP. They say God and Ace. <laughs> Anyways, um, let's see if they're ready. I'm so mad that I, I forgot that MVP was going to be at that, that summit thing. Or not the summit. The, um, uh, what, what would it, the, the party after BlizzCon. Oh, Legacy like of the Way Bunch thing, yeah. Yeah, I just I, I knew he was going to um, do the show match, so I, I should have brought the card, but I didn't. I'm never oh. going to get it now. Never. Okay, they're both. Nope, just kidding. That was me. That's it, Brittany. Okay, now they're both ready. <laughs> Almost nailed it. <clears throat> Alright, so NYU is down one. Impulse and MVP have got to bring it back on Central Protocol. It's going to be a TVZ. No, you should look at that picture I linked in our group chat then. <laughs> I saw that you posted something, but then I was like, I don't know. I don't know. This is pretty good. <laughs> okay, I believe you. Uh, damn, I gotta fix the overlay again. Uh, yeah, well, while Zombie Group does that, we got two teams in front of you. This is, of course, oh. four players in a 1v1. What? That's because it's Archon mode. Spawning here in the top left side of Central Protocol. And I'm more like, what is this map? Playing for Rochester. It's going to be the combination of I Love Colorin and Icarus. In the bottom right is the purple Terran for NYU. It's Impulse and MVP. Okay, mm TVZ is probably the least seen matchup on this map. For whatever reason. You don't see a lot of games on this map is the first problem. The second problem is usually Zerg somehow squeaking it in through the vetoes and the process is like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah, it's... To, to explain really quick why everyone hates this map, but this definitely doesn't change going into Archon mode despite <laughs> mistakes being eliminated through teamwork. It's This map just doesn't have good thirds, or fourths for that matter. And in Legacy, there's not a lot of two base builds. You know, it's funny because on Lyralac, they want to change it and make the natural bases gold bases. I think this is the map they should have done that on. Whew. Whew. Ah, uh, I don't know. I think she's just going to do that. I don't, well, I, actually, I would favor that over any choice to fix it. But they're trying to get rid of the back rocks, which I still find hilarious because I don't think it's the back rocks that caused all the problems on this map. <laughs> it is the base layouts. Yeah, it's the, the third base is so hard to take for anyone but Zerg, basically. Uh, if you get, like, close position, say, if Terran is over here, then, like, sometimes the Zerg can have trouble themselves. Like, you know, Terran's not as quick, but still pretty quick. But with that combined, you know, addition of having actually a fairly good, like, tank push, it could be kind of deadly going into their back rocks. But that's not the situation. Diagonal's always going to favor the Zerg. 
the longer uh, away you are from them, the, the better they'll feel. Even as they go into Roach Ravager, um, that is a style that is more aggressive and can really abuse short rush distance like Arena. They still don't mind the, the length. It still gives them a lot of time to recuperate after a failed attack or what have you. Uh, that factory is way far away from the barracks, so I'm gonna guess it's gonna have a tech lab on it. <clears throat> was it Lily? No. <laughs> that Reaper didn't kill anything. Oh, this Reaper did. Hello. Hello. Kylo? Right. That little piss baby? Thank you. I don't know, I thought it was pretty cool. Whatever. Did you? I a really awesome lightsaber. It's kind of... <laughs> like S in one. Are you quoting that SNL skin? <laughs> Guys, I heard Kylo Ren. Uh, my buddy saw him in the shower and said he's pretty ripped. <laughs> <laughs> Your dude is a liar. Kylo Ren is a punk bitch. <laughs> it was a pretty good That skit. line was really well delivered. <laughs> uh, there is a two-base roach warren. Hello. Hang on, if you could do like an undercover boss StarCraft edition, who would you do? Like, would it be Mike Morham or would it be like Carmack or like, who would How you How would that even happen? Like, we get him to Team House? Like... No, no, like, like Blizzard's an actual industry. You could have the CEO of Riot pretend to like, be a graphic artist intern or something. Oh, I thought you meant specifically for eSports. Yeah. But... Like, who would be the undercover boss that you would pick? Like, that's not going into esports undercover. That's going into, like, just... That would be, like, a regular, you know, undercover boss. Okay, okay I don't no. know. Hang on. You have, like... Okay, hear me out. Red Eye. But everyone knows what Red Eye looks like. So they have to do, like, really extensive makeup and give them, like, a yeah. fat or something. So can you imagine what he would look like to go undercover? <laughs> Where would he go undercover? ESL. Anywhere. I don't know. Pretends oh. to be, like, a sound guy at, like, an IEM. I These don't know. sound guys, I swear to God. Duran, you can have Duran be undercover in the CSL. Goes to Jeremy <laughs> Austin. <laughs> okay, maybe. Um, so the Roachworm I thought was going to be made for some shenanigans, but um, the layer's only like halfway done, so maybe not a nice worm. Third base is on the way. Tank and a Liberator combination for our Terrans here. Um, so without a medevac, these tanks are just going to stay at home, be very, very defensive. And I don't really know if I like that. The Liberator's only going to provide like a modern amount of harassment because it's it's only the liberator no hellions to draw fire no uh tank drop basically otherwise no marine drop it's just uh it should be easy enough for the zergs to clean up it's fair to say even good players are struggling with liberators in some situations and i look at this map behind the mineral lines and immediately go to if there was bunny builds in play i think this would be bad news bears for our zerg yeah, big ol' chunk of space right there. But there is the Literally. first Liberator. Yeah, and the second Liberator is on the way. Spore Crawler is instantly made, so not a bad response. They do have that Roach Warren for this reason specifically, I'm guessing, because otherwise they're getting plus uh, melee, so for their Lings. Now, the Roach Warren can be used to get Roaches against a Hellbutt attack, and also be used to get Roaches to turn into Ravagers against a Liberator push, but they're still not getting Roaches. They're just getting drones. Okay. I mean, if they if they think that that's that's going to be taken care of with just queens and a sport crawler, then that's that's more power to them. And so far, it is being taken care of just by a queen. Ah! Run, Liberta! Run! Oh, he's barely gonna die! Okay, dies. Whoa! 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 <laughs> It lived past its targeting circle. That was so weird. Okay, well, eight drones go down through this so far. Uh, I'm a little bit surprised at the aggressive attempts to keep mining through it, but they're starting to push this back. Yeah, I mean, again, like, four roaches take the, the drones off of mining. I mean, at the end of the day, they didn't need the roaches, which is awesome, cool. Like, roach one feels a little useless right now, but they also did not need to put the drones back when they did. In fact, some of them still not mining. That's awkward. Okay, someone noticed. Creeps were looking pretty good. That is to be expected in Archon mode when the um, either the macro player might have been dealing with the Liberators or the micro player dealing with the Liberators. The point is able to uh, split that attention to the Creeps right as well. 
Central Protocol, not a big map, so <laughs> just a couple of Kree Timers, one, two, three, four, five, are spreading out every which direction. So what do you think about taking this base, opposed to the other one? So this one? Um, it didn't matter, I guess. This one you can break the rocks down and not have to worry about it being used against you, so... So, I actually like this base being taken, only in terms of if you want to take a fourth, you could actually take the gold and kind of be in the same location to defend both. Whereas if you took the other third, going for a fourth would overextend him one way or the other. Or them, I should say, excuse me. I can't say that this is something that we're talking out of experience here for, but I, just, I like the concept of it. The problem is, at the same time, there's a lot of creep spread coming their way, and spending towards their opponent isn't going to be easy. So I guess what our Zerg are trying to do here is go into Ultras after being into ra uh, Roaches and Ravagers, which makes it even more bizarre they didn't bother to get Ravagers against the Liberator attack. Usually, like, six, you know, kind of, uh, as the third gets set up is, is the safest way to play, and then you add on later, of course. But Hydras as well, the Infestation Pit should be leading up to that Hive if they're able to push this attack back, and actually Terran's going to just be a little scared of going onto that creep. Uh, actually, Terran has a really good shot here. They were up even heavier in supply, and now it's slowly bridging as more and more roaches are on the way. They could attack before, uh, of course, you know, the, the hive is even done. The Invitation Pit's not being used for fungals or that hive quite yet. Oh, poor queens. Uh, their upgrades are about to finish. I believe the Zergs would finish first, so they might want to wait to take that attack. They don't actually want to be pushing into these tanks, especially when they can be microed. Be very careful with this defense. Um, but behind this, we have the Terrans going for a fusion core, actually, and going to Liberators. That's going to be very interesting to see how that plays out. So there is finally the Hive for the Zerg. The advanced ballistics are kind of weird to see come down this late. I don't know if there's a lot of room for Liberators to be used to a great extent here, but they're going to try their best. Fusion Core does finish. Tank's gonna get some nice shots fired. Oops, it's the nice thing about being able to focus on just micro and not have to bounce back home and macro every three seconds. You can do this with those tanks. Catch your opponent off guard. They're gonna push in, but they pick up the tanks. Only one's gonna die through this. Not too bad. What am I even get some pops off right there? 2-2 two, two for the upgrades on Zerg, making it a little bit easier for them to push into this. All the tanks are now gone. Well. And MVP, oh, actually, they're gonna have to stay it's, on the ground. Um, it's 2-0, actually, because those those upgrades went into melee, not missile. I really wonder what would happen in this fight if it was the missile that oh, that's finished. True, yeah. Uh, I also made that mistake and then I actually checked the, uh, looked at the upgrades on the unit. So it looks really bizarre seeing 2-0. Uh, but they, they were intending to try and get up to that hive, I think, quicker than this. Uh, to be honest, like, the, this wasn't the cleanest macro build we've ever seen. That wasn't, like, Soul Key's, you know, greatest game ever. But the, the idea is solid and they are able to push the Terran back. So, um, even though it was a little, uh, wonky to get there, they should be able to get to an Ultralis Cavern. I don't know why they're not putting one down already. Oops, you're late. Sorry, Overlord. You're useless. Uh, double drops are not going to clean this up, because I guess why bother? And it is going to go into these uh, pathway of Overlords, so hopefully Zerg will notice that is a Liberator trying to attack the fourth base. There's the Ultimate Cavern. There she Wait, is. Wait, did they... They didn't... Okay, they did get advanced ballistics. Okay, so they do have range on the Liberators. Yeah. Uh, for those who don't know, this actually makes it really hard to hit them. You're not going to have an easy time at all. Uh, but now, I mean, Terran's a little scared to push back into the Roach Hydra. In fact, their macro might have slipped towards the rest of the... Oh, wait, the drops. Uh, there they are. <laughs> Nailed it. Uh, the drops do get into the main base, and uh, it was scouted with a long line of overlords. They're just uh, Neither micro nor macro player was paying attention, so there goes the Infestation Pit. Uh, you do want to get Infestors eventually to add on to those Ultralists. The Hive is also going to be targeted here. They're not going to get that. Plus, the Ultra is already done, so I don't know if it was really that most important of a, of a target. A couple of Crows of Bios kill a couple of those Medivacs. There are, there's more army waiting to help here. And with uh, so few Medivacs, he should be able to push this back. Yeah. Done and done. And with that last push before Kaitna's plating finishes... Terran's not going to have to deal with Zerg, Elchilisk, and no. you. They are going for Liberators. That is their tech choice. They started pretty early on, and they're not they're not bad if the Ultras just run into them. This is maybe where I'm, Zerg wants to get a Spire. 
I'm just more looking at this map being 80% creep. <laughs> It's it kind of yeah. it tells you a lot about the tale of the way the game's been going. Uh, just not being able to clean this up. It's not about not having energy for scans or anything like that. We choose like they're actually not cleaning it up is the big problem. The uh, drone cat's a little low for our Zerg players here at 55, especially as they start taking more and more bases. Probably want to pump that up to even 70, really, uh, if they're going to go ahead and double expand like they did. Uh, the Kainas planning will finish, but they can only afford one Ultralisk because they had to remax a little for the double pronged push. <clears throat> it's it's going to be able to take a few hits from the bio, but actually the Liberators, unless they accidentally target fire out nothing but Lings, will just uh, dissolve the Ultralisk, basically. Yeah, the Kainas planning is going to be really nice to uh, keep that bio from hurting them, but you're right, the Liberators oh, are always going to pack that huge punch. The small Leapfrog here from Team Purple, and there comes that first Ultra. So you can see it takes um, some hits, but... There's the Liberators getting some shots yeah, off tanks as well. That, that was the Liberator taking a shot to the Ultralisk. It's going to pull back because that's a pretty good setup for our Terran player. I think that they should have just... They basically, like, if giving up this base was the price, they probably should have done it to get a, a Spire, more Ultralisk, Vipers, even something to deal with those Liberators because going into that turn was never going to go very well for them. But the, yeah, like, I mean, Corruptors even, just like four of yeah. them would do wonders here, but... Yeah, the Corrosive Bows keep being targeted on the bio. The Corrosive Bows should really be aimed at those Liberators and at the tanks. Mm, they do not have enough of a bank. They already wasted their, their one army, and uh, they might just get steamrolled here. You know, I really thought NYU was going to drop the ball on this one, but uh, yeah, they're starting to get a good good handle on the situation. Try to come from, from the side, though. Side swipe's not too bad. Takes out some more of these Liberators, but their army's depleted, and this is probably game. It is game. Uh, taking an engagement while they still didn't have that much of a bank, they still didn't have the appropriate reaction to the Liberators, was just not the best way to play it. And, uh, well, they're obviously paying for it. Uh, it feels like, it doesn't feel like an end game when you know that you have so many bases up and, uh, even still mining, although this one's finally gonna get taken down, but it is. Like, you're below 100 supply and you didn't do any damage to the Terran. They're, uh, so, hmm. I got a fun fact for you, Zomagro. Oh, yeah? Did you know you could jump from the top of the Grand Canyon all the way to the bottom without a parachute? Yeah, and die. Just, yeah, just not twice. <laughs> thanks, thanks for that one. Mm, this is game. Uh, actually, the Terrans are starting to crew that bank that certainly wish they had. Upgrades starting to go down. Trying to do a counterattack is their best and only hope? Nope, not even. Catches reinforcements. I mean, I guess the thing is, without Liberators, these Ultras are still going to be pretty nice, but... Uh, that's, that not maxed out armor upgrade means that the Marauders can still hurt them. The Marines are going to be tickling, but uh, the Marauders can still hurt. However, this bio army is heavily stimmed. You know what? They've got a bank, but they're not really got the great production, as funny as that is to say. Mm -hmm. I, still think, I still think Zerg's out of the game, for yeah, sure. Yeah. It's just, this army here could actually get wiped. Yeah, probably. The Liberators will live on. There's just there there wasn't an answer for them, but this is this might be in it like you know, okay like liberties look really appealing against Zerg Ultras. Okay, I got it. Like, this is how I'm going to counter them. But the problem in professional games uh, and what makes them a little more difficult to use is that usually a spire has gone down at some point. Like they went for a spire first, or maybe they added a spire when they're getting the hive because they're thinking about greater spire later on, um, and they do end up getting either corruptors or if they don't have a spire. Uh, Vipers, <clears throat> and they can abduct the Liberators, or they can just try and parasitic bomb with a, a grandstanding army. You know, more more ultras than what we saw from our Zerg in this game, and that's usually where Liberators do start to fall over Ghosts, which uh, I guess you can kind of say they're countered by Fungals, but not as much as the Liberators are countered by just Corruptors running over the army. But there are no Corruptors this game. There's no anti-air. The Ravagers tried their best. The Hydras tried their best. Dear God, it's a very stimmed army. Please stop stimming. <laughs> Please. This is game. Come on now. Come on now. Alright, see. You have another game to fall back on. This. <laughs> I know. Come on this now. Is, the GG timing is very real. They've still got some control on the other side of the map, but the Zerg looks good on top of this SCV, so looking for a comeback. They're going 13, 15, 16 kills deep, Zombie Grub. It's very, uh, you know, it's very rare to see that you could divide, you know. Terran's army supply by I, I don't even know what. <laughs> 50? 50? Yeah. 50, I believe. To get to the Zerg supply, so. There we go! GG! Whoop whoop! Whoop 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 whoop!
Ace of matches. That's true. Going to the ace match. That is going to be on Orbital Shipyard. And we do not know the players. That's going to be the reveal. Mystery. <laughs> yeah, you, you can see my camera, right? Yes. The mystery. <laughs> That's close to what I added, except with more like pizzazz, so good job. Yeah, it's a matter of waiting. Now, of course, let's not forget there's another best of five behind this. So if you guys are uh, same format, you know, 1v1s into 2v2 into Archon mode match and all this good stuff. So I'm not... Do, do we know which uh, which schools are playing next? Yeah. Um, oh, that's messed up. <laughs> the hell? I just fixed you. Why would you do this to me? Oh, well, I'll just look over here. Okay, just kidding. <laughs> Nothing's moving. <laughs> this failed. I don't know. I've forgotten. <laughs> okay, nailed it. Right? Here we go. Finally, Jesus. Indiana <laughs> University versus University of Chicago. Okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna be rooting for Chicago. Why? Uh, Erie, Indiana really made me hate that thing. That state. That word. Erie, Indiana. What? You never watched that show? It was, like, it was like right before Goosebumps, like in the evening. No. Wow. Oh. I, um, you ever watched Luck of the Irish? Nope. Oh, man. So it was like, it was one of the most famous Disney, like, you know, movies, like Disney on Disney Channel movie, movies type deal. Um, it was always played back when they would play it, like, every single, uh, one of those movies every single day. And it was about, like, a kid, like an Irish guy, right? Um, and he loses his lucky coin that he didn't realize to start turning him to a leprechaun, because that's what happens to Irish people. Oh, th okay, <laughs> you, you know what? That makes sense. Um... <laughs> yeah, um, so he has to go, like, uh, like, take it back. So at the end of the, the movie, <clears throat> his mom's Irish, his dad isn't, by the way, so his dad had no idea about this either. At the end of the movie, he has defeated the evil bad guy that stole his coin. Uh, where did Pope Bunny go? There he is. And... You know, okay, so the evil bad guy's like, okay, fine, you won fair and square. Like, what's my what's my punishment? And he's like, okay, your punishment is to go to, um, like, Erie. And you're going to be, like, you know, uh, banished there. And the guy at the end of the movie is like, you know what? I don't care, because that's in Ireland, and I'll just come back even stronger than before. And it's pronounced Irie, not Erie, boyo. And the guy's like, my father's from Cleveland, or whatever. <laughs> he gets sent to, like, pollution. Filled, like, there you go. Where the fuck is Lake Erie? Lake Erie is a movie, apparently. Oh, I remember, it's a horror movie! Okay. Portland. Well, let's Lake Erie stay apart. <clears throat> Where is Pope Bunny? Sorry, I'm, uh, I'm actually talking to somebody about something kind of important. I'm going to be not involved for just a moment. Like, Ivy. Well, uh, at least join the game. Here you go. Alright, yeah, got it. Real ID hype! What the hell am I listening to? I don't even know Monster Cat had this type of songs on it. Just gotta skip past that. Oh, I think Poke Bunny might have the lobby bug. Because he is here, he's not idle anymore, anyways. Unfortunately, the lobby bug has been plaguing everyone. <clears throat> Excuse me. Come on now, buddy. Do this for the team. Enter the lobby.
Wow, that, that image was so stupid. Why did I not there? I'd better go into our group chat for that. Oh, <laughs> from earlier. Ah, uh, man, someone's tweeting us to uh, cast Grey Goo, but excuse you, do they know about our StarCraft passion? How much are you gonna pay us? I mean, yeah, passion. <laughs> So how about that Overwatch in five days? Overwatch is going to be sweet. I'm super excited for it. And sorry, I'm done being distracted now. Uh, yeah, the Overwatch beta coming back is going to be awesome for a lot of different reasons. But I just... I've missed having something consistent we could play in our downtime. Like yeah. right now we kind of dick around on like our Mellow or Tabletop Simulator. But Overwatch was a lot of fun that you could just like sit down for a good couple hours, play some competitive games and... Do poorly or, or well, and it didn't matter. It was just fine. Yeah, I agree. That's like, because I, I really don't feel like I can just log into a game of StarCraft and play one game. Um. Yeah, we've been playing, for those who know, Mean Summer Grub and, and Fear Dragon and such, we've been playing a lot of team games lately. It's been kind of fun running into random people in 3v3s. You had that one guy message you tweeted like as he lost the game he's like if you're the real zombie grub you're hot bye <laughs> yeah that was that was a good feeling totally oh we are finally ready um yeah i guess uh i was you can kind of see the chat i suppose but an hour estimate is usually pretty nice actually uh even for heart of the swarm it was a little on the low end for best of five but it was pretty accurate and legacy of the void usually goes faster but so much of this is setting up lobbies and the fact that they have two games that are four players each really also t cuts into that time. But anyways, <clears throat> I'll talk about Overwatch and game lobby making and all what it is aside, as it is the ace match in the bottom wait, left wait, wait. as the purple protoss for NYU. It is wait, wait, once wait. again... Wait, wait, back up. Do it again. I'm going to give you a slow clap, all right? Oh, come on. Yeah, yeah. Well... <clears throat> in the bottom left, once again playing for NYU, it is the purple protoss shoe. I suppose you want the same thing. <laughs> In the top right, he's red, he's Terran, he has no facial hair, it's Pokebunny! <laughs> Nailed it. The way too. Alright, so this is a rematch. Check that out. Right? Cool. Um, they played on Ruins of Saros to start things off, and... Poke Bunny ended up winning. A lot because Shu just kind of fumbled in the late game. He didn't get upgrades. He forgot about them. Um, that was actually most of the reason, so I'll just stop right there. Uh, that is actually a really big problem, as Protoss does depend more on uh, a lot of units than it did in, in Heart of the Swarm. It was all about, like, do you have a Colossus guy that's high enough? Do you have enough storms that, you know, that would cover your army? Uh, and Legacy of the Void, it is more of a mass gateway coupled with maybe Immortals and Storm after a while. Um, so you do need those upgrades, just as Terry need up their upgrades for their own bio. Oh, but I like how Poke Bunny's starting to mix things up, though. Ooh. Yeah, totally crazy, radical factory hype. Well, in one base, Although, saw a lot of this in the Koreans. I was going to say, actually, I shouldn't be making fun of this, because we saw, for example, Patience lose his qualifier match to one single Hellion. Yeah, that was pretty there, crazy. There's was, there was, there was other factors, too. You know. Well, it was because he was distracted, yes, but the one Hellion ended up actually just causing a tap out. It was, it was a pretty extreme game. Of course, you all know that we're from Base Raid TV at this point. Like, <laughs> I don't think we... Uh, if you anyone new, but hey, if you are, we cast for Base Trade TV, and today we cast for nine hours, not including this, and uh, half of that was a Korean qualifier that was sick, so you check out those VODs on our channel. Uh, proxy versus a 1-1-1, though. This will make things interesting. A Proxy Robo, what? I think the 1-1-1 hits before the Robo would hit, though. Kind of what I was thinking, too. I mean, it's weird for Shu to scout that there's no natural base and do this. I think this is actually a great move if you scout a natural base coming down. You know the production is going to be lax. But regardless of what comes out of this, the Hellion, will it see it? No. Nope. nope, nope. I can't believe that positioning actually doesn't see that. <laughs> yeah, that is really close. Now, if they did see it, I, I don't think they would have teared down. Not with the 
uh, units come across. No, it's only one adept. I guess the, it was a shade that I saw. So if they had seen it, they might have been able to take on the pylon. Hellion and Marines combined, but it would have been close. The Adept is going to try and poke and see what exactly is coming out from that 1-1-1, because one, one, it could have been a Cyclone coming out, it could be into a Liberator, or it could be a drop with the, the Hellions. So definitely important to see what's going on. On their turn side, the Hellions is going to scout what uh, Shu has, which so far is not much, because it's, of course it's over here. Yeah, and it's getting a couple of kills too. It's just a little bit annoying. Uh, if nothing else, it distracts a lot from what should have been the timing of this really sweet attack. Poke Bunny's going to be moving out on the map, and Shu is going to be potentially having to spend Warpins at home instead of across the map like he'd like to. Yeah, this is going to get weird. The gateways do come down, both of them in fact, not just the one, so it returns the warp gates uh, faster, but here comes the attack. Marine drop into the main, Hellings trying to skirt on by. Adepts, uh, we recently found out, that actually would have been killed without that the Adept nerf. Yeah, with the Adept nerf, it takes five hits instead of four, so once again... What up? David Kim. <laughs> Oops, kill it. <laughs> yeah, thanks David Kim. Uh, but right on top of a pylon is not ideal, however, there is no observer, because it's on the other side of the field, so it'll take some time to get back here. That was a terrible Widow Mine hit, and this drop is failing miserably, and what's worse so off far. is back at home. I don't think Poke Bunny has much to defend. No, he, yeah. he's, he's in trouble. So it's awkward, right? Like, okay, so Shu you know, wasn't even sure on the timing, it looks like, on the Widow Mine, so pulls, like, way too quickly, but better to pull, I guess, too quickly than lose all of your freaking probes. But the, the most requires out of energy, so the Medivac hasn't done too much damage yet, um, and if it keeps avoiding the Adepts, it should be able to oh. have the capacity to do more damage. But... I suppose that micro that Pokemon is doing right now with a Medivac drop would not be possible before the Adept nerf either. Yep, two sh or three shots instead of two. So the Warp Prism gets into the natural, it could just lift it. Uh, there's not much to do around here. <laughs> why, why is it not an orbital? <laughs> uh, he's too busy micring. Oh, oh the, uh, I'm gonna pay attention to that wood of mine. Three, two, one. Here we go. Okay, not bad. Uh, the thing is, it's gonna continue getting uh, damage done, because I don't know where the Observer is. There it is! It went to... The natural first from the okay whatever. Maybe you thought there's another one of mine. I... Ah, that's a good point. Um, well, the war prism did not start the ball rolling for Shu like I think he wanted, and now it's not just Marines. There's two tanks, more Marauders, and a, another Medivac on the way. This one coming back home, of course. And I think now Poke Bunny should have a fairly good defense. Um, I don't know if if Shu can break it even with an immortal. Hmm. Mm mm mm. Oh, Mortal's gonna load and be like, oh, this bunker is so well defended. Right? <laughs> Psych. Tank's gonna get some good shots, actually. I really like the tank in this position, but the second one needs to get into the fight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the Adepts do transfer through, but Shu kind of falls flat on his face, and you know what? Poke Bunny, as much as his drops accomplish nothing in terms of, like, severe damage, his army is huge now, and his counterattack potential is very extreme. Yeah, it just picks up in the uh, Medivac's effect. He still doesn't know about this, but he's going to find the Robo now. You see the Warp Prism too, that's a little bit awkward. Definitely kill all this. At least the pylon. Come on now, definitely kill all that. I, I was like, going to go for the full-on counterattack. I don't like that, actually. I mean, it, it might work. It might in the game, too. But this is this is free. This is important production. This is important yeah, robo. His natural base... His, uh, Poke Bunny's natural base, excuse me, is uh, going to get a mortal drop while this goes on. In fact, it is getting a mortal drop while this goes on. Yeah, and this is very annoying. Now, a Cyclone is uh, going to be a... It would be better, sorry, than these tanks that he keeps on making, but um, getting a little stubborn, and actually, he just sends the murder oh. through a pylon again! You knew that oh. pylon was there! Oh, no. Oh, if only you just stayed to clean up all of this shit. <laughs> if only Poke Bunny was the type of guy that could grow facial hair, oh. he would have known how to handle this situation. Oh, that hurt. That hurt so much. Um, well now, this has kind of evened up. You have Shu on a lot more probes, um, but his army is still a little bit farther down. If he had a third base building, actually, he would be quite good. Now it goes down. Uh, finally gonna go for these these buildings. Thank yeah, God. These are pretty crucial things to pick off. Uh, not just because the pylon and proxy, but the... Not even the rope, it's just the two extra gateways to the production. Uh, this actually is supply block Shu, funny enough. Yeah, now he's going to be down to three gateways. Uh, adding on the two now, though. Does he have a second robo already? No. 
you do want a robo. I mean, eventually you're going to want more mortals, uh, maybe more observers, and maybe, maybe, maybe disruptors, but uh, he was playing with a mortal blink soccer adept storm. Uh, note that I, I specifically said that because he didn't get charged, which we didn't really like at the end of that game. Hey, those two, two mortals still alive. Get him. Oh, I just saw tomorrow's Cybet uh, matches, by the way. Those actually look pretty good. Yeah, not bad. Uh, having to pull back is always going to help Shu. His last gateway is actually still standing. It's a little awkward. His third base is about to finish up and has a couple of pylons to help out, though maybe more to the north would be better. His militia core is still alive and almost on full energy. Blink is on the way. His army is still not quite great. Um... But, uh, you can work with it, I guess, is the best way to put it. Especially if you can pump out an immortal real quick. Doesn't even need an observer. He has... Oh, that's a probe. He has one right here. Oh, no! Oh, no, that was the war prism! Ah! He needed those okay, immortals! Well, oh, Jesus. He needed those immortals for a couple of different reasons. His army supply isn't so terrible, but it's not uh, great. These tanks actually might be better off unsieged than siege, given the type of units that he's fighting, but... I'm uh, gonna use the range to get some hits on the adepts. It's kinda nice. Medivacs can leapfrog them forward. Scoop them up, move them in. Yeah, unfortunately, Shu noticed too late there were any pylons on the north side. This one feels a little useless. Actually, is there only one medivac? <laughs> yeah, there's not too many medivacs. I don't know what happened to the rest of them. He just never yeah. never built anymore. You can't actually stim, and this is a, a fairly important issue when you're playing bio. Yeah. Stims that's again. Stim. This puts all of his units into one shot range. The sim is hurting. Oh my god, and a time warp too. Like, yeah, go for the units. They're all like, they're all one shot. Definitely go for it, and Shu will take the engagement. I was playing Soccer's going forward to take the brunt of the uh, the tank shots, which kind of suck, but um, going to replace them with now his newfound third base economy. That was a f I will say that is a very scary mistake for Pokemon to make. Uh, I mean, let's not forget, this is the ace match, so there's a little bit extra on the line, and these guys, <laughs> they're playing for their whole team at this point. Yeah, they're both they're making... still not making medevacs. There we go, finally. Ah, yeah, that is a problem. They're both making pretty critical mis mistakes, but, you know, thankfully both of them are making a critical mistake, so... This game still looks doable for both players. Poke Bunny is, is starting to lose out a little bit, though, just with the, uh... The SCV count never getting very high, starting to get to that, you know, 50-55 is a lot better on 3 base, although it's, it's making almost mind out. Um, bringing the tanks, but leaving this one home? Not necessary, but... Okay. This is a small army compared to that of Shu's. The Adept's really making Shu's army look quite nice. And he's bothering to get resonating glaives. Oh, here we go. Oh, no, 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 where are the Adept's going? Sign a transfer on top of the tanks. Not a terrible choice, but, I mean, that could have been a much cleaner engagement for Shu. Yeah, it was it was unnecessary, I guess, the best way to put it. Because at the end of the day, he takes the fight, and that's what's most yeah. important. Um, there is a couple of reinforcements, but Poke Bunny might just get steamrolled here. Uh, a War Prism's coming in for reinforcements, plus two's probably getting chronoed out right now, hoping to hit that, as Poke Bunny has stopped his own upgrades. This is a very disconnected group of uh, units here. I guess for both parties, a little bit. <laughs> Now collapsing on that Terran army, though, and it looks like Shu is going to be able to take it for NYU at the end of the day. He can actually push up. He doesn't have to be afraid. Yeah, that army, I'm actually surprised, grew to this size. Well, I mean, you know, his third money map in the fastest, uh, the most loved for a Protoss player, but it did come down and, and got saturated rather quickly, so... It is that burst of production once you finally get those gateways, and this time he had those upgrades as well. A poke bunny made some crucial mistakes. Shu made some mistakes. At the end of the day, NYU, who looked to be in trouble, are actually going to add another point to their score. Whereas, unfortunately, RIT is going to now go down to 0-2 in the overall standings. Well, for NYU, that's, uh, I, I think, more to be expected. We talked about that before we even got into it. It was the NYU team and the NYU players that were really taking the Archon first half of the season by storm. So... I expected that to be better for Rochester. I'm glad I didn't bet Partoofs in that match, though. Yeah, you would have lost. But, uh, okay. Alright. We actually have another match set up. Um, Yay! It is, <laughs> it's going to be another best of five in the same exact way that we just saw this one play out. So I don't know if it's going to be quite as even, though. There's that ended up being very... Very interesting, uh, mostly because Shu and Poke Bunny, you know, delivering blows to each other and actually 
getting their revenge was quite a quite a story for NYU. Of course, the stories in like a, a ten week um, season they don't get really built up until the the latter half of the weeks when you suddenly realize like oh you could be out if you lose this game. But NYU takes a, a pretty like nice start to the things. Like two zero is pretty nice. But as we wait for the next team to get all set up, I think they're already in the lobby. But still, it's gonna take a while to get the actual lobby set up. Um, we will be going to a bit of a break. Shouldn't last too long. Hopefully we'll see you guys in a couple of minutes.